uh, welcome. The following worksheet is available on www.eclassroom.co.za, but it is also available on this week's uh, week 8 of uh, grade 11, Mathematical Literacy of To Enable. Right, so this is what the worksheet looks like, and this is what the memo looks like. Please do not look at the memo before you have done the answers. Okay, so let's zoom in a bit. Look at the pictures below and give the measurements an appropriate unit of measurement for each picture. Right, uh, you have to read there, so that is 7. And that is six, so it goes down, it's upside down. So this is six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it's measured upside down, so it's six, comma, six milliliters. Yeah, okay, six, comma, six milliliters. This time, there's 12 o'clock, there's one. Five minutes past one. One o five. Um, C. Okay, this is C, and then that's D. C is this one, two, three, seventy three milliliters. Eighty two comma one two. Three. It can be eighty one comma one two three. Eighty two comma comma three. Eighty two comma three. Okay, eighty two comma three and seventy three milliliters. Incidentally, this is called the meniscus. I don't know if you remember it from gray from grade ten's work, and I actually think it's a little bit less than that comma six or a little bit more in this case we're reading from the wrong way around uh, quite a deep meniscus there uh, question e it is 110 kilometers per hour this is a wonderful exercise 110 kilometers per hour and this is a uh, degree celsius you see there so it's 25 25 degrees celsius Okay, and then question number two. Convert the following quantities. You can use the given formula to help you when necessary. One liter is a thousand cubic centimeters. Um, a kilogram is 2,20462 pounds. Degree Celsius formula to Fahrenheit to Celsius. Celsius to Fahrenheit and one ton is a thousand kilograms. 50 grams to kilograms. There's a thousand gram in a kilogram. So you go 50 divide by thousand. Centimeters to meters. There's a hundred centimeter in a meter. So 20 divide by hundred. 61 0,61 liters. There's a thousand milliliters in a liter, so it's 0,61 times a thousand. 180 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. We pop it into this formula because we have this. We want that. So it's 180 times 1,8 plus 32. Three cubic centimeters to liters. There is a thousand, so you go three divided by a thousand to liters, 0.5 tons to uh, tons to kilogram, so you go 0.5 times a thousand. 18 pounds to kilogram, so it's 18 uh, divided by 2,20462 to get kilograms, 20 kilograms to ton. 20 divided by 1,000 to ton, 0 0,5 kilometers to millimeter times by 1,000, 25 liters to cubic centimeters, so that's 25 divided by 1,000. 0 0,805 kilograms to grams times by 1,000, 255 milliliters to liter divided by 1,000, 13 Fahrenheit to Celsius, we have Fahrenheit, pop it in here, I'll pop centimeters. And 0 0.69 kilometer, kilometers to me, meters divided by a thousand. Okay, let's look at the memo. 50 grams divided by a thousand, 
you get 0.05 kilograms. 20 centimeters to meters divided by 100, 0.2 meters. 0.61 liters times by 1000 gives us 610 milliliters. 800 180 centimeter uh, degrees Celsius gives us um, 356 Fahrenheit. 3 centimeters divided by 1000 is 0,03 liters. 0,5 tons times by 1000 gives me 500 kilograms and 500 kilograms times 1000 is 5 million grams. 18 pounds divided by 2,20462 gives me 8,16 kilograms. 20 kilograms divided by 1,000 is 0 0,02 tons. 0 0,15 kilometers times by 1,000 is 150 meters. Times by 1,000 is 150,000 millimeters. J, 25 liters times 1,000 is 1,000 is 25,000 cubic centimeters. I think I said that incorrectly just now, sorry. 0 0.805 kilograms times 1,000 is 805 grams. 225 milliliters divided by 1,000 is 0 0.255 liters. Pop in Fahrenheit, out pop centimeters, so that's minus 10,56 degrees Celsius. Remember with your calculator, you first go 13 minus 32 equals divided by 18. Otherwise, your calculator will take preference to the divide. Um, and 0 0.69 kilometers times 1,000 is 690 meters. Okay, question 3. Convert the following units of time. Assume months have 30 days. 13 days to hours, 24 hours in a day, so it's 13 times 24. Let's see. Um, 75 days to months, so you go 75 divided by 30 is 2.5 months. 16 minutes to sec seconds, 16 times 60 is 960 seconds. Minutes to months, so it's 5,600. 561 600 minutes so first convert to hours so divide by 60 give us 9360 hours nine these 24 hours in a day so we go 9360 hours divided by 24 and gives us 290 days if you take the 290 days and you divide by 31 you get it 13 months three years and three months two days so three years is um, 39 months oh, 3 times 12 is 39 and you go 39 times 30 is 1170 Ugh. 3 times 12 is 36 plus 3 gives us 39 months 39 months times 30 days is 1170 days Okay, where are we now? And then 1,170, yeah, okay, sorry. And then 12,960,000 seconds. Divide by 60 gives us six, 216,000 minutes. If we convert that to hours, we divide by 60 to get to 3,600 hours. And there is 24 hours in a day. So if I divide by 24 hours, it gives me 150 days. It's actually not a lot. 150 is half a year. And it's only that many seconds. Oh, every second count, isn't it? Precious. Um, 2 million and 73,600 seconds divided by 60 seconds gives me 34,600. 34,560 minutes and if you divide that by 60 I get 576 hours 144,540 hours divided by 24 is 6,022,5 days if I divide by, by 365 that's the amount of days in years I get 16 comma five years and that's 16 years and six months comma five of a year is six months 
1095 days divided by 365 is 3 years and 10 years times 365 is 3650 days times 24 is 87,600 hours times that by 60 I get 5,256,000 5, minutes Question 4 Greg the Grand's man at a superstar hockey club is asked to repaint the lines of the hockey field calculate the perimeter um, so it's length plus breadth plus length plus breadth so it's 92 plus 55 plus 92 plus 55 and the perimeter is 294 meters. Calculate the perimeter of D, the semicircle that marks the scoring goal. Use the formula uh, of the semicircle as pi times r. Remember, it's, uh, semicircle is half times pi times r, but there's two of them. Okay, so it is... 3,14 times 14,63 and that gives us 45,938 so you can also have 45,94 squared meters ah uh, no it's perimeter uh, sorry circumference 54,94 right uh, so perimeter of a semicircle of the two semicircles hmm. a perimeter of D the semicircle that marks the goal scoring area so that these two uh, semicircles that's why you have the whole semicircle uh, what's the total length of the lines that has to be paid on one field okay so you take the perimeter of the field plus three times the width of the field plus the two perimeters pi times r sorry the semicircle is 2 pi r but then you divide by 2 again and then the 2 cancels out so that's where 45,96 yeah, let's use the pi button in the calculator ok so total is the perimeter of the field 3 times the width of the field 2 times the semicircles and that gives you 550,92 meters Greg is asked to paint four fields what the total of length he has to pay so you take the fields times four and that's 2,203,68 meters question five um, Ngombeni family uses x liters of water per day use the given formula to answer the following questions the Kopeni family uses 3,850 milliliters of water per day for cooking and drinking, 90 liters per day for bathing, 105 liters per day in a shower, they wash the dishes in the sink, they use 3,100 milliliters of water, they run two baths, uh, loads of washing, sorry, 70 liters each, 76 to flush the toilet and one kiloliter is a thousand liters how many liters of water do Kobeni family use per day now we can't do calculations with both milliliters and liters so first you have to convert those two milliliter bits to liters so it's 3850 divided by thousand gives me 3,85 liters and 3,100 milliliters gives me 3,1 liters so you add everything to and remember two loads of washing and that gives you 417,95 liters per day um, how many liters of water are used when one person showers if three people shower per day so you take the total water per shower divide by three 35 liters per shower mm, that's a nice quick shower well done family C. how many liters of water did the family use in the month of March assume they use the same amount of water per day okay so January February March has 31 days total consumption is 31 times 417,95 liters so that's 12,956,45 liters the cost um, if the family pays 5,4 uh, 5 comma five six per kiloliter of water use how much do they pay in March um, so you say a th 
12,956,45 divided by 1,000 Q times by 5,54 is 72,04 Rand. Is two suggestions how they can save water. Uh, they can only use showering and not use the bath. They can try washing dishes all at once instead of washing one to two dishes at a time. They can show they wash a full load of washing when they use a washing machine instead of washing small loads of clothes in the washing machine. They can put a two little kurang bottle full of water in the cistern of the toilet, the top flashy thingy. This will reduce the amount of water need for flushing. Or any other reasonable answer. Um, actually, oh, they don't use that much water anyhow. Okay, question number six. Janet wants to bake cookies. She do, does the following recipe: twelve ounces, ounces, ounces of chocolate chips. 8 ounces of caster sugar, 1 teaspoon of vanilla essence, 12 ounces of plain flour, 8 ounces of butter, 2 eggs. Okay, so 1 ounce is equal to 28,3495 grams. Jan is not able to me measure quantities in ounces. She can... Um, she convert the recipes from ounces into grams. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... 12 ounces, so 12 times 28,3495. 8 times 28,3495. 12 times 28,3495. 8 times 28,3495. So let's see. The chocolate chips will then be 340,19 grams. Caster sugar is 226,8 grams of caster sugar. The plain flour is the same as the chocolate chips and the butter is 226,8 grams of butter. If Janet wants to make 180 cookies, what should she multiply the recipe by to make the correct amount of cookies? So, uh, 24 cookies. So, 280, oh no, 24, <laughs> uh, times by 180 over 24 so it's 180 divided by 24 so she has to times all the ingredients with 7,5 um, how many eggs would Janet use so you will take the amount of eggs necessary in the in the bake times seven and a half so it's 15 eggs and now Janet sells the cookies she sold 48 of her chocolate chip cookies at 5 rand each. It cost 51 rand 50 to make a batch of 24. How much profit did Janet make on the sale of these cookies? Okay, so she had to bake two batches because it's 48 cookies. So it's 48 times 5 is 240 rand. 51 comma 5 times 2 is 200 and 103 rand. And that is 137 rand. And... No sense. 137 rand profit. Remember, profit is income minus expenditure. E. What is the cost price of making one cookie? So you take the 51 rand 50, you divide by the amount of cookies, so it's 2 rand 15 to make a cookie. Janet was asked to make one batch of cookies and she sold each one for 4 rand. How much profit did she make on a batch of cookies? So the cost of one cookie. 24 times 4 rand is 96 rand 51 rand 50 remember was the badge so the profit is 44 rand 50 cents question 7 the map below the map below are to use this map below how many kilometers are presented by 4,15 centimeters so you take 4,15 centimeters and you times it by 165 kilometers and that would give you 684,75 kilometers measure how far Johannesburg is from Durban now this is um, difficult because this is n not to scale but Johannesburg to Durban you will measure with a ruler and 
uh, 2,9 centimeters. So it depends on how you print it out actually. Um, okay, C. How far Johannesburg, Johannesburg from Durban? So you will take the measurement you get in B, times it by 165, and that will give you around about 478,5 kilometers. D. How far in kilometers is Cape Town from from Port Elizabeth? Port Elizabeth. So there's Port Elizabeth. You first measure it, and it should measure around about. Um, 3.8 centimeters if you times it by 165 you get 627 kilometers <laughs> just sorry 220 627 kilometers how far would I travel from Ladysmith to Bloemfontein and then to Johannesburg Ladysmith uh, Bloemfontein, Bloemfontein, Johannesburg. So you first measure from Ladysmith to Bloemfontein and then from Bloemfontein to Johannesburg. Um, so it's 2 centimeters, 2 times 165 is 330 kilometers. Bloemfontein, Johannesburg is 2,2 .2 centimeters, that's 363. If I add them together, I get 693 kilometers. If um, in reality, from Johannesburg to Bloemfontein is a 423 kilometer trip. This is larger than the number of kilometers measured in E. Explain the reason for that. Okay, the reason is the direct route does not take the roads into account. There is no road that goes in one straight line from Landysmith to Bloemfontein. The route is not direct and therefore it's longer and it goes uphill and downhill and that's also not taken into consideration. Gee, if you lived if you lived in Pretoria or Chwane and you want to visit the R, Durban, Polokwane, Riches, Ben, up and then before returning home, in which order would you visit these towns? And give a reason for your answer. Okay, so starting Pretoria, I will travel to Polokwane, then to Uppington, then the R, and then to Durban, and then to Riches Bay before returning to Pretoria. This is because this route does not make me go back past places I have been to un unnecessarily and it's relatively direct. That's great. Um, you can also go the other way around. So you can also travel this way around. Okay. So any order as long as you have a good explanation. Uh, then question 8 is about Gavin and his juice. Okay, there's the answer. And the end is near. Um, Gavin is asked to supply juice to his soccer team during half time and he decides to make the juice from a concentrate mix. The concentrate that Gavin bought is made in the ratio of 5 to 1. How many milliliters of concentrate must Gavin add if you use 180 milliliters of water? So you go 180. This is the 180 divided by 5 times by 1. See, 180 divided by 5 is 36 times 1 is 36. Right, um, how many milliliters of concentrate must Gavin use to make 3 liters of juice? Now, right, juice is made up of 6 parts 5 water, 1, one uh, concentrate. So 5 plus 1 is 6, so you take the 3 liters or 3000 milliliters divided by 6, and that gives you one part, and that's exactly what you want. 3,000 milliliters of juice divided by 6 is 500 milliliters of concentrate. C. If each soccer player needs 300 milliliters of juice, how many liters of juice does uh, Gavin need to mix for 30 players? 300 times 30, and that will give us 9,000 milliliters divided by 1,000 give us 9 liters of juice. And D. If the juice concentrate is 17 rand 99 and Gavin is making a juice for 30 soccer players, how much does he spend on the concentrate? All right, so he needs 9,000 milliliters of juice. Um, if you divide by 6, 
because there's six parts, five plus one, you get a thousand five hundred milliliters. So the one part, the concentrate part, should be thousand five hundred milliliters. So therefore, he must buy two liters of concentrate um, because he can't buy less than an entire liter and he, he can't just buy one liter. So two liters times seventy ninety nine is thirty five rand ninety eight cents. If Gavin decides to sell his juice at two rand fifty per cup and he sold seventy cups of juice, how much profit or loss did he make? Okay, so it's two hundred and fifty times seventy. Two rand fifty times seventy is hundred and seventy five liters. And here's the expenditure part. Um, 70 milliliters times 300 is 2,100 milliliters of juice. If you divide that by 6, you get 3,500 milliliters of concentrate. So if he has to buy 4 liters of concentrate times 70.99, that gives us 71 rand 96 cents. If you take the income that he received minus 71, he earned 103 rand and 4 cents. And that is the last of this worksheet. Uh, thank you very much.